So I'm going to take a moment to sort of step out of myself. Jesus will come in. He's really excited. He's really, really excited. Um, the first few minutes, he'll still be resonating in me. You'll feel the energy as he's be coming in more and more. Um, Just give me a moment to get out of my self, my way. Good afternoon. My friends are here with me. They're shifting into place to help keep my energy in this space and being. It is with great delight that I join you today. As my conduit mentioned, the time is now for love. The time is now. There's no future without a now. Certainly that phrase is always true. But in the moment, the more love now, the greater the love can be with each step, each second going forward. Look to the vista and see a world filled with love. And then bring that future to you in the now. Spread it among your friends, your family, those you care about. And together, go forward to the future. But you see, <coughs> blessings upon you. You will see that future is already now because you have brought the future of love to the now just by being your own beautiful selves. You understand people do not connect through flesh or color. People connect through energy. The greatest energy is love. And the more love you fill yourself with and send out, and the more you encourage those you love to do the same, the more power there is on the planet to be what it's meant to be. When I died, it was not a comfortable affair for me. I was being tortured till my last breath would leave my body. Yet, it is still my choice. And with my last breath, I continued unto my last breath 
to be a person of love. If you give me energy, I swallow it, recompose it as love, and send it back to you. Hatred can never stand against love. If I absorb all of your power and it inflames me and I turn it to love and send it to you, you're enveloped by love. Think of any toddler having a tantrum. No, I will not take a nap. I hate you. I hate you. And you pick them up and you hold them and you love them. They work out their emotions and then they fall happily asleep in your arms, encircled by love. This world is filled with energetic toddlers. Hate is always a toddler to love. Hate can never stand on its own when enveloped and encircled by love. Wherever you see hate, gobble it up, pull it into your gut, turn it to love, and send it back out. This is an interesting exercise I challenge each of you to do. Do you understand what I am saying about this process? Yes. Do you see how you are the keeper of your inner state of being? Anything you have within you, you can turn to love and then send it out. It is extraordinary how people respond to this. It lets you know whom you wish to have in your inner circle and whom you allow to be a little more external. The more they become people of love, the more they take your love, fill it within themselves, and then spew love out to others, let them be close to you. And those who run in fear from your love, let them run because you're sending love out to them. They will run far, they'll run far, but eventually the love will catch them. If not in this life, after this life, they will have is that oh, regret and they'll go oh, all that love I ran from my life would have been so much easier if I had stayed and embraced then they may not know it in this life but for their time after life and for their next life they know it one thing about humans is many are short-sighted they say, what about the here and now? What about today? What about this minute? What about tomorrow? I want this to have an effect now. You forget that you are each eternal beings. None of you are here for one life. Any more than none of you are here for one day. So whatever you do in this life is actually for your next life. Any impact you have on any around you is not just for this life, but for their next life and the life after that, their time between lives. You may not be helping the human in their dream form of this existence, but if you send love to someone, even if they repel it, that love goes up to their higher self, who may be saying, thank you so much because I'm getting nothing from this life down there and I am starving for love. So again, send the love. It may go to them in the here and now. It may go to them 10 years from now when they're long out of your life. It may go to their higher self. It may go to their next life, but it will always have an effect. Does this make sense? Yes. yes. When you send love to others and you see the magnetic attraction and repulsion, it's like sifting the gold through the sand. Let all of those who are repulsed sift away. And then you find you are surrounded by golden love and light. Simply by letting yourself be within the resonance of love. And you'll find when you're alone, 
You are in the resonance of love. It's much better than being lonely. Much easier to talk with your angelic guides. This is a time, excuse me. I'm shifting my friends to help with my grid to support my work. I ask each of you, as you are speaking with me today, allow your crowns to be open and your hearts to be open so that your guides may also speak with you. You may be surprised with the wisdom that will flow into your being. Whatever you receive, accept it. Do not self-doubt. In this time on your planet, I regret to tell you humanity has taken a step in the wrong direction and it's causing a great deal of destruction. The majority of this destruction can be remedied. It cannot be undone. Things cannot go back to where they were, but we can still go forward to a good, clean, healthy, healing place. The more people on this planet who connect through love, the more people will be able to continue on this planet. There is a rumor I cannot sit in this body. <laughs> Very soft and feminine. Uh, there is this rumor that your planet is going to shift into two frequencies and be two different planets. This is not true. You will remain one planet. But who will remain on this planet will have to have a higher and higher frequency as your planet goes forward which means those of lower frequencies are going to be shifted out like the sand out of the sieve. This is why some lower frequency beings that do not wish to leave this planet are fighting to keep the frequency of your planet within their comfort level. The more you raise the vibration the less comfortable they are, and eventually they will be shifted away. Love is the only way to heal your planet. This is what I tell you. Love, purity of being, joy within your hearts, these are the weapons that will be the salvation of your race. As the beings who wish to have the lesser emotions predominant, they will become protagonists to you. They will do what they can to provoke you to remain in your lower state. Don't fall for this claptrap. Let yourself evolve. If two children are fighting and they're fighting over the most ridiculous thing and they're screaming at you, send them love. This is what we do as adults. We send the children love and we teach them how best to behave and work out their resolution. So when the lower frequency people come at you and they provoke you to feel helpless, remember, they are in their final throes of tantrum. They will do anything they can to keep you from raising your frequency raising the frequency of all those you come in contact with, raising the planet's frequency, and then these other beings will be sent to another place to live. It's a fine place. They'll be happy. Don't worry about them. Does this make sense to you? Does anyone have questions about this process? So the battle of Earth now is truly the battle of emotional stability. Will Earth stabilize in fear or will Earth stabilize in love? 
our goal is for the love, by the way. And you will find, interestingly enough, more and more people of love, especially in this calendar year, will be coming forward and saying, join me with planetary love. It will become easier and easier for you. This is the time for everyone to hold hands, to send the grids, the networks, the mandalas. You will find divine words being channeled through more and more people. I encourage each of you to become a channel in whichever way the energy flows through your being. It may be through your art, it may be through your healing, it may be just the way you impact others with your daily living, it may be through words as with this being. However divine love channels through you, however the wisdom and any you wish to connect with from above wish to flow through you, open yourself up, receive and send it through. It will be a delightful experience for you and huge benefit to your planet. I also encourage everyone here to do automatic writing, automatic drawing. This really helps to open you up. Automatic singing in the shower, wonderful benefit for your soul. There's someone here who writes poems, please. Automatic poetry writing. Don't worry if it rhymes. Does anyone have questions before we continue? No. No questions. Oh. Let yourself think about what questions do I have. It can be about anything. I have a question. Yes. Um, how are the lower vibration souls going to be removed? Is that through death or some sort of dimensional change? That is an excellent question. I thank you for that. You are an alert, aware, articulate person, and I value you for that. <laughs> and this is one way we raise vibration by acknowledging truth. Live in the resonance of truth and value the beauty that comes to you. Yes, some through death, some through changing to a higher frequency, and some through um, the next incarnation will be in a new place. Now, here's the thing. If you want the planet to be high vibration, you have to claim it. At the moment, the lower vibration is doing a pretty good job of claiming things. But you'll notice revolutions of love are starting everywhere. Mm -hmm. Even in the American continents, indigenous people are stepping back up and saying, we are of value and non-indigenous people are saying, I want some of that, please. Yes, we are changing around the world. Look at the political revolutions. Look at the social revolutions. Look at the environmental revolutions. So the more you can shift people who live in non-love to become people who live in love or people who start raving to live in love. Every little shift raises the frequency, raises it. To be honest, there's too many people on the planet right now and you're not managing your population. It is possible outcome that there will be a great deal of death and destruction. Think about if there are bombs and death, then societies will be knocked out of their current political systems. People will have to return to a slightly more primitive way of being and by the nature start returning to earth essence, returning to the natural divine connection. This is not how we want things to happen, but it is one way where it could happen. Another way is the people of love step up more and more and say, no, we will not have your pipeline through our sacred lands. 
No, we will not have animals slaughtered for trophies. No, we will not have forests destructed because you are not going to battle to harm. You are standing strong for protection. Whenever you feel anger over distresses that are happening, say, how can I convert this anger to love? Can I convert it to love by actually going to a place and giving physical support? Or can I convert it to love by researching and can I convert it to love by writing articles or by giving presentations or by volunteering or by giving financial donations? Think about how when you say, I don't care for this negative thing happening because of someone's greed. How can I take this energy and convert it to love? When you find the answer that is true for you, you will feel it in the core of your being. You will be in the resonance of truth. And from there, you can convert to love. The more people who convert to love, the less future death and destruction will happen. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. As we go forward with higher and higher frequency, those of lower frequency will either become infused by higher frequency or they will start incarnating elsewhere. We believe it is inevitable that this planet will raise its frequency. The question is, how much death and destruction will occur before that happens? We would like to minimize that by the way. Does this answer your question? Yes. Okay. Are there any other brave souls? I have a question. Yes. Um, how do you work with fear using the energy of love when dealing with issues of trust and security, which in their absence produces fear, and you have that awareness, yes. that wish to transmute that uh, with compassion, perhaps, during the process as you gain greater uh, trust in that which is not visible in this spirit realm. Yeah. If that makes sense. This is an excellent question. All hate comes from fear. One of the reasons we fear fear is because we wish to be people of love, not hate. Most of us, those who prefer hate are generally those that had too much fear in their, in their belly for too long and they fell out of the resonance. But when you envelop them with love, they generally at some point remember love and then they have to go through all the hardship of releasing the fear. Fear is a very uncomfortable emotion because it is pinpointing to you. You have the ability to lose something that is valuable to you. What that element or item is, is something that you need to know within yourself. Facing your fear is facing the potential that you will gain a loss. If you wish to go forward with a project, but you know in doing so, you might become ridiculed by all you care about, that will create a fear. Or in doing so, you may lose your employment and lose your financial ability. Or, you know, there are so many things to be afraid of. So it is important to say, as I go forward, what are my fears? And how do I reconcile these fears? You must honor them because this is your body telling you, 
make sure you have fail safes or make sure you at least acknowledge what you may be giving up. If by speaking your truth, someone you love will step away from you, then you have a choice. Do I stay with someone I love or do I speak my truth? Then you must acknowledge and honor the loss you will have of the person you love so that you may live within your truth. Once you do that, you say, well, wait a minute. Perhaps I can speak my truth in a way that this person and I can learn to find the medium between our two truths, or we can honor each other's truth without loss of each other. Once you honor, acknowledge, honor, and respect the fear that is within you, then you can learn to work with it, to go forward to love. Sometimes your fear will be an inevitable reality. If so, then you will have to come to terms with that fear eventually. How you handle that helps determine how you will go forward again. Because certainly we do not wish to stay wallowing in fear. It is interesting to find many of our fears are actually unfounded. Many of our fears are, what if? What if? What if you say to your boss, please do not call me chicky baby and you know give me the promotion I deserve? Will your boss like respond by firing you? Then you are out of a job. Well, that is a valuable fear. Maybe do a little research. Are there other jobs I can do before you speak to your boss? Or talk to human resource. Or you know, you have to do your research to support what will happen. Or you go forward blind and then you're like, eh, we'll deal with it when we get there. But the fear is there within the gut of every human being. Some people are driven by their fear. Some people say, where is my greatest fear? Then that's where I must go because that's my greatest challenge and my greatest potential for success. Some people avoid their fear. They say, because I have fear, I'm not going to go anywhere or do anything. And some people learn to communicate with and work with their fear. My bride is telling me that since I died because of other people's fears, I may not be the best representative of this statement. <laughs> she wishes to remind me that when you have a collective of people, friends, loved ones around you, supporting you, you can release your fear even in increments if you wish. Or you can just throw it off and let your friend's love carry you forward. She says for her, when she was young, her greatest fear was being ostracized. And then she found she was often ostracized because she was a woman who craved great knowledge and understanding. That is how she learned about self-empowerment. And as she went forward, powered by self, towards what she desired, surrounded by fear, she found others who also wished for self-empowerment and knowledge and understanding came with her and then she was not alone. And she said she was not ostracized by anyone she cared about, only those who she was able to send love to. And it was amazing how many of them in the future got used to her way of being and accepted it. This is a lesson my bride shares 
with more grace and articulation than I do. Does this help you? It does. Thank you. Above all else, honor yourself and honor everything within yourself. If it is within you, it is there for a reason. Find out the reason and see if it needs to be healed and released, embraced, infused, whatever you need. You have it within you. I wish to speak for a moment about the mandala of love that is surrounding your planet. It is not in good shape right now. There are areas where it's broken or crumbling or has no energy flowing through it. So this mandala of love that was created by myself and by Buddha, by Muhammad, by many others. There are so many whose names are not even written in history who worked on this mandala of love. We tell you, in your meditations, let yourself go out, connect with the grid of love around your planet, and see where it needs help. Become love architects and send your energy there. This is not whimsical fancy. This is greater truth and reality than your 3D daily lives. And it will have a great impact on everyone's ability to love. Do you know what a mandala is? Okay. I will tell you. There was too much silence. <laughs> A mandala is a network. Imagine city streets. This is a mandala. But imagine these city streets are energetic and they are filled with divine love. This is a mandala of love. Now imagine all the streets all around the world and the bridges and the paths the airplanes and the ships and the submarines take. Each of these is on a path of love. And they are underwater, they are above ground, they go through the earth, there are tunnels, they mix and match, they cross each other. This is a mandala. So just imagine this, it is a love. But just as you have bridges that are falling down and roads no one has traveled, our mandala of love, our network of love around the world needs a little support. So you can use your wonderful power of imagination let yourself mentally, emotionally, psychically project up to it. How you feel you connect with the mandala will be unique for each of you. You may actually see it. You might just feel it. You may say, I don't know what a mandala is. I'm not getting this mandala thing. So you just send your energy to it, knowing it will find it. But the more you do it, the day will come and you're like, I feel it. I feel it. I feel the clink of connection when my energy touches it. Whichever way you can, connect with the mandala of love. You can go to your computer and type in med mandala meditation. Things will come up that can help you learn, help you learn how to do this. Some are kind of silly. You'll, you'll know which ones work and which ones don't. Some of them are on these. But the more you connect with this mandala of love and send your energy through it, you'll find you start exploring it. And I'll tell you, you will have adventures. You will be flowing your consciousness through the mandala of love. Some of you'll go, oh, needs repair here. And you go back and go back and repair. And you're flowing, you'll say, I'm in, this, in, the, in the desert, I'm surrounded by desert animals. You, know, you spend time, you meet with them, and you meet with their mandalas of energy, and you help them connect their mandalas to the mandala of love, which helps the mandala of love, and it helps the animals in their network. And you're flowing, you're flowing, you run into a friend. You run into everyone and everything that connects through love. It's extraordinary adventure. The more you connect up there, the more you are amplifying your love 
and the more you're amplifying the planet's love. Did I speak too lofty or do you understand this now? Understand. understand. Adventures await you. <laughs> Hostess, is there anything I should discuss in the here and now? Um, nothing that I can think of. Okay. People, I will say to you, you are here today because you are not young souls. Anyone who is attracted to these words and this work, you must learn to honor yourself as an eternal being, a sacred and divine soul who has chosen to come into this life and within your experience of this life has chosen to care about the well-being of your entire planet. Stop thinking of yourself as naive or incompetent and start recognizing how extraordinary you are, that you sent yourself here for a mission, a mission of love. You sent yourself here because you, in your eternal being, knows that you have the ability to create great love for your planet. I honor you. All of my friends who are here today honor you. Your guides and guardians honor you. Be sure you honor yourself because certainly you are worthy. You deserve this. The more you honor yourself and fill yourself with appreciation, love, and joy, the greater impact you'll have with this task, with all tasks, with your daily life. You deserve this, and it's time. It is time for you to honor yourself as an eternal being who has chosen a short life. I don't mean short like you're about to die tomorrow. <laughs> I mean short compared to eternal. You could live several hundred years. It will be short, trust me. So this short time you are here, honor it, embrace it. Become love. And that love will make your adventure so much better. Wherever you find fear in your being, honor it and fill it with love. With whatever action is required for that process to happen. Even I, whom you think of, as an ascended master. I am just a person like you who has lived more lives. The day will come when each of you will be like me. Think about that. So when I say look to the future to see love, you are literally looking to the day when each of you will be no longer incarnating, you will be resonating with angels, you will be with light beings, you will be with the masters, you will spread your being through cosmic dust and float with the stars, you will be in your greatest state of joy, always. That is your inevitable future. So embrace that, bring it to the now. Fill yourself with the love of where you're going. Let the future be now. And as you go forward, you are bringing even greater sense to the future. I thank you for sharing your time with me. My host is becoming weary. So I will leave now, but I suggest to each of you, when you go to sleep tonight and you prepare for your dreams, 
invite your guides, invite your love to come and join you. And then have wonderful dreams tonight, every night. And fill your days with wonderful daydreams and love. Blessings upon all of you. Namaste. Love. Forty minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all so much.